Celestial Observation Many children, when they are young, feel as if they could stretch their hands out toward the nighttime sky and pluck out a star. As they grow up, they begin to realize how high the sky is and how far away the universe is. Thanks to advancements in technology, we are now able to observe numerous stars and the moon in the nighttime sky in greater detail. Let's learn more about how universal mysteries are being solved through celestial observation. Celestial observation. You need a special device called a telescope to observe celestial bodies. Telescopes consist of the three major parts, a main tube, tripod, and mount. The main tube features an objective lens that collects light and an ocular lens that magnifies the image. The tripod supports the main tube and the mount is located between the main tube and the tripod and is what holds everything together. Telescopes have three main functions. First, they gather light. This feature of telescopes is called light gathering power. The larger a telescope's diameter, the greater its light gathering power and the brighter its view. The next main feature of a telescope is resolution. Resolution is the ability to clearly distinguish between two objects close up. Again, the larger the diameter, the higher the resolution. The last main feature of a telescope is its magnifying power, which refers to the ratio between an image seen with your naked eye versus an image seen through a telescope. A high magnification telescope, as its name implies, can magnify the image to a greater extent than other telescopes but it has a narrow view and darker image. When selecting a telescope, it's important to select a device that suits your observation purposes. Now let's take a moment to discuss electromagnetic waves before we learn more about the different types of telescopes. Electromagnetic waves are classified into gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible rays, infrared rays, and radio waves. Some electromagnetic waves are absorbed before they ever reach the Earth's surface. Ultraviolet rays are absorbed by the ozone layer and the stratosphere, and infrared ray is absorbed by vapors and carbon dioxide in the air. Electromagnetic waves that are barely absorbed into the atmosphere and easily observable on the Earth's surface include visible rays and radio waves. Telescopes can be divided into optical telescopes, radio telescopes, and space telescopes. Optical telescopes used to observe visible rays are divided into refracting telescopes and reflecting telescopes. The main difference between these two types of telescopes is their objective lens. A refracting telescope uses a convex lens, while a reflecting telescope uses a concave mirror. A refracting telescope has a stable image, but may have chromatic aberration, which is a term that refers to blurring around the edges of the image. It is also expensive and difficult to manufacture these types of convex lenses in large sizes. This is why refracting telescopes are usually small telescopes used for observing nearby planets or the moon. Refracting telescopes can be divided into Galilean telescopes and Keplerian telescopes. On the other hand, reflecting telescopes have no chromatic aberration, and their lenses are affordable and easy to manufacture, even in larger sizes. The downside, however, is that the interior of the main tube is exposed to air, which makes the image unstable. Reflecting telescopes are usually large telescopes used to observe star clusters, nebulae, and the galaxy. Reflecting telescopes are divided into Newtonian telescopes and Cassegrain telescopes. Next, let's look at radio telescopes. Radio telescopes receive radio waves emitted by low temperature celestial bodies. The antenna dish acts as the objective lens for the radio telescope. The radio telescope has the advantage of working with long wavelengths that reach Earth without being absorbed into space or the atmosphere. For this reason, these types of telescopes can be used regardless of the season or weather. This is extremely advantageous for observing celestial bodies that are far away in an effort to discover extraterrestrial life. However, a major disadvantage is that radio telescopes lack resolution power. To make up for this shortcoming, 
an ultra-large electron telescope was manufactured, and interferometer technology was used. Interferometer technology connects multiple electron telescopes and interfering signals with each telescope to form a single large telescope. Lastly, space telescopes are installed on satellites outside the Earth's atmosphere to observe celestial bodies. Space telescopes are advantageous in that they allow for clear observation, unhindered by the atmosphere and the observation of multiple wavelength ranges, including ultraviolet rays that do not reach the Earth's surface. The Hubble telescope is a space telescope that mainly observes visible ray ranges. Space telescopes are divided into infrared telescopes, X-ray telescopes, and gamma-ray telescopes, depending on their wavelength. Now let's delve further into methods of celestial observation. To observe celestial bodies, you must first understand compass points and direction. Compass points emphasize the position of the observer, while direction focuses on the location of the observed object. Compass points change, but direction does not change. Here's an example. Let's say that Romeo and Juliet are a couple facing north. Stars A and B are situated between Romeo and Juliet. The two stars are to the east of Romeo, but to the west of Juliet. This demonstrates compass points. Now, let's focus on the stars A and B. A is to the west of B from both Romeo and Juliet's point of views. This demonstrates direction, which is unchanging. Now, let's talk specifically about observation direction. When we observe the south sky from mid-latitudes in the northern hemisphere, where Korea is located, the Earth rotates clockwise from east to west. We say that the Sun moves from east to south to west, and we say that the Sun rises, crosses the meridian, and sets. Next, let's talk about observation time. A single day is made up of 24 hours, and the time of day is decided by the location of the Sun. The period of time from noon to noon, or midnight to midnight, is called a day. When the sun is up in the southern sky, it is noon, and when it is in the northern sky, it is midnight. Over a period of 24 hours, the Earth rotates 360 degrees, or 15 degrees per hour. In other words, if the Earth has rotated 15 degrees, an hour has passed. Next, let's talk about observation phases. The planets and the moon glow by reflecting sunlight. The degree of the shining side of the celestial body facing the Earth is called a phase, a concept which is similar to visible shape. The phase changes depending on the part of the celestial body that receives sunlight and the direction in which the observer is looking. Take the Moon, for example. The Moon does not create its own light. Rather, it reflects light from the Sun. This is why the apparent brightness and shape of the Moon changes relative to the position of the Sun, Moon, and Earth. Let's look at the various positions of the Moon as it travels around the Earth. When the sunlight shines from the right of the Moon, the Moon looks bright on the side facing the Sun. When this area is so wide that the Moon is fully visible, we call it a full Moon. When the Sun and Moon are in the same direction as observed from the Earth, the Moon is not illuminated. We call this phase the New Moon. Lunar phases change counterclockwise with the revolution of the Moon from Crescent Moon, Waxing Moon, and Full Moon to Waning Moon, Dark Moon, and New Moon. We've talked about direction and observation time. When observing celestial bodies, elongation gives us information on the observable time and viewpoint. Elongation is the angular distance between the Sun and a celestial body. If the celestial body is to be observed is situated to the west of the Sun, we call it Western Elongation. And if it is situated to the east of the Sun, we call it Eastern Elongation. Since this is an angle, elongation has a mathematical value. Observed from Earth, elongation has a range between 0 and 180 degrees. The elongation at zero degrees at conjunction, 90 degrees at quadrature, and 180 degrees at opposition. In this lecture, we took one great step closer to the infinite concept called space. Next time, we will learn about the moon, 
one of the most fascinating celestial bodies in the universe. Series of Y. Series of Y.